In this video, I'll be discussing characterization in literature. Now, have you ever read a story or even watched a movie where you've gotten to know the character so well that you were sad if something happened to them or when the story ended? Well, if so, that might be because of really good characterization. So how does a writer create characters on a page uh, with whom the reader can develop a real connection? Let's look at this sentence. He was worried because he was late for a meeting. Very straightforward to the point, I know what's going on, but I don't really feel a connection with the character. On the other hand, if the author wrote, he rushed down the courthouse stairs, glancing anxiously at his watch. Beads of sweat ran profusely down his face, and his heart was now at the crescendo of its soul. He tried to assure himself that he'd be on time, but his appearance suggested that he knew there was little hope. Well, I now feel a much stronger connection with the character. I almost worry with him. I'm almost sweating. My heart's almost beating fast. I can empathise with the character a lot more because of good characterisation. So characterisation is essentially the way the author reveals what a character is really like. Now, bad characterisation can make a character seem boring, unimportant, and without a connection to the reader. But good characterisation, on the other hand, does leave a clear picture in the reader's mind. So for instance, if you, if you read with piercing blue eyes as if they were the very ocean, he approached, his beard was groomed as if to be deliberately a little disheveled. The lapels of his tartan blazer boasted meticulously slitched flowers in an array of colors. If you really think about that, I'm sure you can imagine what that person might look like. So there are two main types of characterization. There's direct characterization and there's indirect. Now with the former, the author tells you exactly what a character is like. It's very clear. For instance, he was angry. I don't need to do any investigatory work here. I know he's angry. Indirect is where the, uh, the author shows you what a character is like. For instance, veins protruded from his neck and forehead as his fist clenched. Through his tightened jaw, he let out a scream. Now, I'd have to read that and then interpret that he's angry. It makes me do a little bit of the investigation, which is part of the fun. Now, this is an example of direct characterization. Can you find the words which directly show Amaya's qualities? When Amaya brought home a pet rabbit, her mother did not object. She knew Amaya was a caring, responsible girl who would take excellent care. Yep, pretty easy. Caring and responsible. Tells me exactly what she's like. I don't need to guess. Let's look at another example. Read the following passage. Which words directly show you Dr. Cheryl's qualities? Well, Dr. Cheryl was the best dentist in the practice. She had a charming smile, a gentle manner, and a warm personality. She made a trip to the dentist a pleasant experience, despite the discomfort. Again, pretty easy. Best dentist, charming smile, gentle manner, warm personality. It tells me directly what she is like. However, writers generally prefer to use indirect characterization. It's more fun. We develop a connection with the character. We have to investigate a little bit more. And we can really picture what they're like in our heads. Now, they can do this for a few ways. They can show indirect characterization through speech, what a character says, and how they say it. For instance, if I shout a lot of the time, it might show that I'm angry. If I don't say anything, it might say that I'm quite shy. If I speak very formally and academically, it might make me sound like a serious person. And if I always speak with slang, it might make me sound informal. There's thoughts, the things people think. Now, if, you're, if the story is written from a first person or a third person omniscient point of view, you'll know what characters think. And their thoughts can tell you a lot more about them. So what do they think? Are they, is what they think different to what they say or do? Because that might say that they're possibly a liar or that they're very polite. For instance, if I'm really hungry and I'm thinking that I'm hungry, but I'm telling someone who's offering me food, no, no, I'm fine, thank you. That might tell you that I don't want to put people out. There's effects on others. What do the characters around a character do? And what does that say about that character? For instance, if 
I walk in the room and all the students cry, what does that say about me? Probably that I'm not a nice person. But if I walk in the room and everyone cheers, that'll tell you that I'm a nice person, very um, popular. There's actions. If I walk in the classroom and I smack my hand on the table, throw something at a student, that again will tell you I'm quite angry. If I go around high-fiving everyone, it will tell you that I'm very personable, I'm very friendly. And finally, there's looks. If you saw me in a really, really nice expensive suit, nice clean shoes, possibly even a top hat, what would that tell you about me? Alternatively, if I had clothes with holes in them, they smelt, they looked really tatty, it might suggest that I'm poor. So looks can tell us a lot as well. Now, if this is going to be hard to remember, just think steel. S-T-E-A-L. Speech, thoughts, effects, actions, looks. Steel. Let's go through these. Now, the first is speech. Again, what they say and how they say it. I've got two excerpts from Harper Lee's The Killer Mockingbird. The first, you never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view, until you climb into his skin and walk around in it. Now, Atticus Finch, a character in the novel, he says this. What does it tell you about him? Well, it tells me that he's a very emp empathetic person. He likes to think about other people, uh, and he's a very considerate person. The second quote, they're certainly entitled to think that, and they're entitled to f the full respect for their opinions. But before I can live with other folks, I've got to live with myself. Tells me that he doesn't disagree. He disagrees with the crowd, but he's still very respectful of it. So he's obviously a, a bit of a gentleman. Uh, it also says that he has to live with himself, showing that maybe he is someone with morals and wants to have a good moral compass. So the two things he says tell me a lot more about the character. Now the book is written in the thir first person. And I really understand the protagonist's thoughts in the story, Scout. I really know what she's thinking at all times. So at one moment in narration, she writes, It was times like these when I thought my father, who hated guns and had never been to any wars, was the bravest man who ever lived. Well, this tells me that she obviously respects her father quite a lot. She looks up to him and she looks up to his sort of values. The second excerpt is from the beginning. She says, summer was on the way. Gem and I awaited it with impatience. Summer was our best season. It was sleeping on the back screen porch in cots or trying to sleep in, tree, in the tree house. Summer was everything good to eat. It was a thousand colors in a parched landscape. As I said, the, the story is written from the perspective of a six year old girl. And I think that the thoughts here really highlight just how young and innocent she is. Summer to her, is what summer is to most children. It's playing around, it's eating good food. Summer to an adult is different, we still have to work, it sucks, right? But to her, it's all these good things, so it really highlights her innocence and her childishness. Let's look at the effects of others. Now, this excerpt is from William Golding's Lord of the Flies, and it's about the two, two of the main characters, Piggy, the fat boy, and Ralph. Now, it says in the story, the fat boy hesitated for a moment and spoke again. What's your name? Ralph. The fat boy waited to be asked his name in turn, but this proffer of acquaintance was not made. The fair boy called Ralph smiled vaguely, stood up, and began to make his way once more toward the lagoon. The fat boy hung steadily at his shoulder. Now, let's look at the effects on others. The fat boy asks Ralph his name. Ralph gives the name, but doesn't give him the name back doesn't ask the fat boy his name. What does this tell you about the fat boy? If he asks for people's names, but no one wants to ask for his name, tells you that he's probably quite annoying, a bit of a loser. So we can look at the effects on others to get an insight into that personality. Also, if the fat boy wants to really hang around with Ralph and hang steadily at his shoulder, it might tell you that Ralph is a bit of a leader, a bit cool, quite popular. Let's look at actions then. Actions is pretty easy. Uh, as I said, if I walked in a classroom and started slamming things, you'd know I was angry. Now, in this excerpt, um, it's about a woman called Daisy Buchanan in F. Scott Fitzgerald's The Great Gatsby. Now, in the story, she marries a man called Tom Buchanan, a very, very rich man. 
but she falls in love before this with a man called Jay Gatsby, who's not so rich. Now, on the day she's supposed to get married to Tom Buchanan, she gets a letter from the poor Jay Gatsby she once knew. And she starts crying. She's an absolute mess. She doesn't want to get married anymore. She won't let go of the letter. Um, she got into a cold bath, and she is an absolute mess. However, about half an hour later, after some spirits and ammonia, she's good to go. She puts on her pearl necklace, um, she puts on her dress, she goes out to get married, and not so much, not so long after, without even a shiver, she goes on a trip. Now, what does this tell you about her? Within half an hour, she's a complete mess, doesn't want to marry this man, this rich man, she's in love with this poor person. And as I said, half an hour later, she completely changes her mind. She's fine. She goes and gets married to the rich man without even worrying. Well, it tells me that she's quite fickle, that she's quite superficial, she's quite shallow. So her actions tell me a lot about her. Finally, there's looks. They can reveal a lot about character. There's an excerpt here, the first paragraph from of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. And he's talking about Lenny says, a huge man, shapeless of face with large pale eyes and wide sloping shoulders. And he walked heavily, dragging his feet a little, the way a bear drags his paws. His arms did not swing at his sides, but hung loosely. So we've got a, a guy here, a huge man, shapeless of face, large pale eyes, sloping shoulders. But he drags his feet, and he's, his hands are described like paws, and he's just walking really sluggishly. Big fella, walks sluggishly, possibly without purpose. He's kind of like a huge mindless animal, without a, bit of, without a brain really. The second paragraph there is from another story called Grapes of Wrath. This is the man was dressed in grey wool trousers and a blue shirt, dark blue with sweat on the back and under the arms. The boys in overalls and nothing else, ragged patched overalls. Their hair was light and it stood up evenly all over their heads, for it had been roached. Their faces were streaked with dust. This is an easy one, wasn't tell you about the family. Sweat all over them, in overalls, ragged, patched overalls. Hair was light, they've got dust on their faces. It tells me that they're quite poor, they've probably been travelling a long time, they're probably workers. So the looks tell us a lot more. Let's try it for yourself with this excerpt. So Mrs. DeBose lived all alone except for an African-American girl in constant attendance. Two doors up the street from us in a house with steep front steps and a dog shot hall. Well, the fact she lives alone tells us a lot. Well, why does she live alone? Perhaps her husband died, Perhaps, and if that's the case, perhaps she's really old. The fact that there's a girl in constant attendance looking after her kind of reinforces that, that she's a really old person. And then there's some direct characterization to prove that. She was very old. She spent most of each day in bed and the rest of it in a wheelchair. Again, really gives an image of the woman. She's super old. She spends most of the day in the bed and she's in a wheelchair. It was rumored that she kept a CSA pistol concealed among her numerous shorts and wraps. So she's obviously a very paranoid person. She has a gun with her all the time. She's an old, paranoid disabled person Gemini hated her okay kids hate her old mean maybe paranoid old lady if she was on the porch when we passed we would be raped by her wrathful gaze subjected to ruthless interrogation regarding our behavior and given a melancholy prediction on what we would amount to when we grew up which was always nothing so she watches kids and she's really horrible to them and she's like oh when you grow up you'll be nothing so she's obviously a very mean old horrible lady who's paranoid with a gun she's disabled we had long ago given up the idea of walking past a house on the opposite side of the street kids want to cross the opposite side of the road just to avoid her that's how mean she is that only made her voice and made her uh, that only made her raise her voice and let the whole neighborhood in on it She's that crazy that even when kids try to avoid her, instead of leaving them alone, she shouts even more. We could do nothing to please her. If I said as suddenly as I could, 
Hey, Mrs. Dubose, I would receive for an answer. Don't you say hey to me, you ugly girl. You say good afternoon, Mrs. Dubose. So she's also uh, very, very formal. She says to children they shouldn't be saying hey, they need to say good afternoon. Um, but she's extremely mean. She calls her an ugly girl. So she's from a bygone age. She's a bit old. She's really crazy. She's angry. Under deeper investigation, the fact she lives alone, um, she's paranoid. It might say that her husband died, and that's why she's really mean and angry now. I don't know. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching.